Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Monday. Trust y'all had a good weekend. J.R. Conrad, did I do anything fun this weekend? Um, yes, <laughs> I think. Um, my family and I, we went hiking at the Clarence Nature Preserve. Lots of dogs go there. But we didn't have a dog, we just had a child. A four-year-old, which is kind of like a dog. He crawled in the snow. Um... Good morning, hello Zanzib. Did any of you guys do anything fun this weekend? How are you guys managing? Like, it's week four. Morning, Joey. It's week four, like, do you guys feel like you can succeed this semester? Are you finding time to have fun? Weirdly enough, my husband and I have been talking about getting a dog. I'm not a I'm not an animal person. Good morning, Tidy. The idea of my I have a sister who owns a black lab and a husky golden mix. And there's just hair everywhere. She came to visit with just her black lab once, and I found hair like for two weeks from just that dog. I don't know what fun is, all I know what Zoom is. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, I think that's the case. Do you guys have mostly synchronous classes or asynchronous classes? Like, do you have a lot of classes where you're just watching mindless lectures? <laughs> okay, a lot of them are synchronous. Matt's good to see you. Um, like, uh, I don't know. But yes, my husband and I have been talking about getting a dog. I just don't know what kind i don't know we'll see my husband has always worked from home since we moved here so he's been wanting a dog forever oh my gosh three times a day <laughs> that sounds terrible holly uh, yes yes um you know jr i wonder the same thing sometimes um, so it depends on what, so classes starts in a minute, but just, just a little idea about what it means to be a professor. There's two kinds of professors that you guys have. There's lecturers like me who, like I'm hired to teach. I can do some research if I want. Um, I don't necessarily have a time for it though, depending on the time of year or the resources. Um, so you've got professors like me who just are hired to teach and I mean, I love my job. I love teaching. Um, that's why I wanted to take this position. Um, and then you also have professors who also do research. So uh, some professors who are also doing research, I mean, there's still administrative stuff to do behind the scenes for classes. Sometimes you get TAs, um, who do that stuff for you. 
Um, so I'm sure some professors are just posting the recorded lectures from last year and they're just going with it because um, they have other things to do. Some professors don't necessarily want to teach. They have to teach. Some, some people do like teaching, but they also have research that they need to do that takes up a lot of time. Um, so it really just depends. Some professors, I also wonder the same thing. Why are you, what are you doing if you're just posting recorded lectures? Some professors have increased their office hours, some haven't. I don't know, it just depends. Um, hopefully you guys are getting the resources that you need in order to succeed in your classes. Um, it is, it is different. It's just different. I don't know. There might be light at the end of the tunnel, but who knows what all of this means moving forward. Okay, let's go ahead and begin a very interesting conversation this morning. I like it. I like conversing with you guys. I like knowing where you guys are at. Um, okay, so Matt, I can answer your question in office hours. Um, just remember, okay, those are the two sections you have to do. So Matt, I'll probably get to your questions in office hours. So just hold on to that for a bit, a little bit. Okay, last week, a student, I'm pretty sure in the 1130 section, asked me to go over the questions from the week three comprehension quiz. I am going to go over those right now because I still think they are relevant to you guys. It's a little small. Let's zoom in on that. Um, so we're getting to the point where it's going to be a little bit harder to debug. Um, so I just wanted to go through these questions and just highlight some of the key pieces um, that you guys need to focus on when it comes to debugging and trying to figure out what's wrong with your code. So here it says for question one, match the MATLAB code to the type of array it creates. So A equals 5320. Those are commas in between there. So commas and spaces put things next to each other. So this is a row vector. B equals 24.6. That's just the standard variable that we've had in the past. So that's a scalar. Um, C, 10, negative 1 to negative 10. So this is the colon operator. The colon operator always creates a row vector. So 10, then 9, then 8, then 7, then 6, 5, then 4, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, all the way to negative 10. But note, there's this apostrophe. This is apostrophe means transpose. So if I have a row vector here, this gives me a row vector, this transpose is going to convert my row vector into a column vector. So here it's a column vector. For D, I've got colon operator and colon operator. So this is two row vectors and they're separated by a semicolon. So this semicolon means that I'm going to stack things on top of each other. So here's going to be 0, 5, 10. Here is going to be 10, 5, 0. Both of those have three numbers. If you are ever curious on what, um, what a section of code does, just highlight it. Click, right click, obviously in MATLAB. Uh, right click, say run selection. Click it here, run selection. Then you can confirm that it's two rows of three. Um, so this is legitimate. This is going to give me a matrix. And you can keep going through that pattern, semicolon, stack things on top of each other. Here it's a number on top of a number on top of a number, number, number. So that's a column. And lin space does the same thing as the colon operator, essentially, where it's going to create a row vector. So here I have start at zero, uh, all the way to 100, um, and I have a thousand numbers. So here's a very big a thousand number uh, row vector. For this next one, it says which statement will result in error? Here is where I was testing you guys to see if you can um, understand concatenation. So zeros, three, two, it's gonna give me three rows, two columns. Ones, three, five, this gives me three rows, uh, five columns. And this comma means they are next to each other. So three rows next to three rows, that's good. So if you're putting things next to each other, they need to have the same number of rows. So this is great. For this one, I have a column vector of three values. Here's a column vector of three values and a column vector of three values. So it's three rows, one column, three rows, one column, three rows, one column. And I have comma here that places things next to each other. So once again, if you're putting things next to each other, they need to have the same number of columns. So three columns, or th uh. If you're putting things next to each other, they need to have the same number of rows. So three rows, three rows, three rows, we're good. For this one, I4 creates a 
square matrix, four by four. Ones three creates a square matrix, three by three. This indicates I'm stacking them on top of each other. So if you're stacking things on top of each other, they need to have the same number of columns. So this one has four columns. This one has three columns. So here you are going to run into an error. It'll tell you concatenation, mismension, dis did, mis bleh, dimension mismatch, cannot concatenate, or something along those lines. If you're ever curious, just once again, just copy and paste this into MATLAB. See what happens. And then M here, so this is another way that we can type our values into MATLAB. Um, I like to use this syntax if I have a big matrix with lots of numbers that I can't create um, using the colon operator or linspace or some other predefined function. Um, we will actually see an example of this um, on Wednesday. Um, but here I have a row vector of four, row vector of four, row vector of four, and I'm stacking them on top of each other. So if I'm stacking them on top of each other, they need to have the same number of columns. So four columns, four columns, four columns, that's great. So this one's my error. For this one, it says which statement matches the following description, store a value of 10 in the third row of matrix A. So here we're saying store a value of 10. So if you remember the assignment operator, the equal sign stores values, stores numbers in variables. So that means 10 needs to show up on my right hand side. I can't do this, this is invalid. This one is invalid. Okay, so I'm dealing with these three options, one of these. And then it says in the third row of matrix A. So on the right, on the left hand side, I need to identify that as the third row of matrix A. So here's matrix A, three row or row three, all columns. Here's matrix A, just location three. Here's matrix A, third row, columns one through five. So if A only had five columns, this would be legitimate. But I don't know how many columns A has here. I just want it to be the third row of however big A is going to be. So here's my answer. Row three, all columns. And then lastly, which statement is incorrect given the following lines of code? Um, so you can just copy and paste this in the MATLAB and see what happens. But essentially what this does is this creates M full of zeros. In the first column, so all the rows first column, it places a five. All the rows second column, it places zero through 12 space or er, with four numbers. In the third column, it places the second row of M transposed. And then in my fourth column, it places these numbers. So four, eight, 12, 16. But regardless, none of that really matters because M is just gonna be a four by four. So numal returns the number of elements. So numal is short for number of elements. So it's a four by four, that means there are 16 elements. Length returns the largest of the two dimensions. So it's a four by four, they're both four, so it returns a four. Size returns the size of my matrix. But there's several ways to use size. This way indicates that I'm gonna have two different variables R is going to contain the number of rows and C is going to contain the number of columns. So this one's incorrect because it doesn't return a two element row vector. It returns two different variables uh, with two different numbers. And then N dims uh, gives me the number of dimensions. Okay, so hopefully that clarified some stuff. Hopefully maybe that um, wasn't an issue for you and it all makes sense. Um, but I, someone requested last week and I didn't get to it. So I figured I would get to it today. And I mean, your homework and Zy books aren't due until tonight uh, and your homework's not due until Wednesday. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, let us go ahead and get into math. So it took a little longer than I wanted, but that's okay. Um, we are going to go through math today. So this week is all about how to use our arrays in, um, in context of math. So we've got all of these things we can create with MATLAB. There's a lot you can do with the week three material. There's so much. I don't even know everything that MATLAB does because it's changed. Like every iteration, there's like some new thing that MATLAB does. And it's like, oh, I thought that would have created an error, but it doesn't. Um, so sometimes you just have to try something, see if it works, and then keep moving on. And hopefully you understand a little bit more about how MATLAB functions. But this week, we're going to do some very important key fundamental stuff to MATLAB. And that's how does MATLAB uh, do its math? 
behind the scenes. When I type asterisk, oops, when I type plus, when I type subtract, when I type divide uh, exponent, we need to understand what it means when we type those, those operators, especially in the context of arrays. Because you can get in trouble really quickly. Okay, so first things first, MATLAB, if we add two arrays together, it's just done what's called element by element. So I'm going to take this first number in A, this first number in B, and I add them together to get my first number in my result. So if I take a, here's a two by three matrix and add it to a two by three matrix, I'm going to get a two by three matrix. There's my result. And then, like I said, element by element. So this one's a five. This one is a five. This one is a six. And then you just keep going. We have eight, negative six, and one. So note, keep in mind, when we have addition, our matrices need to be the same size. Same number of rows, same number of columns. So if I tried to take a two by three and add it to a three by three, this is not possible because I have a dimension mismatch. So that means I cannot take a two by three and add it to a three by three. I can take a two by three and add it to part of a three by three, the two by three part of a three by three, um, but I can't and just add these two matrices together. If I take a matrix and I add a scalar, so if I take B and add two, that means it's going to take this scalar and add it to every single element in my result or in B. So if I B is a three by two and I have a one by one or a scalar, my result is going to be a three by two, where I'm gonna take two plus two to get four, three plus two to get uh, five, not six, um, three plus two to get five again, negative one plus two to get one, and then four and negative two. So that's a little intuitive. It makes sense. Same thing with subtraction. Same idea with subtraction. If I take B minus A transpose, note they have to be the same size. My result is going to be the same size. So two minus three, uh, negative one, three minus five, negative two, three minus two. So I'm right here. Three minus two is one, negative one minus Negative five is four, two minus four, negative two, negative four minus five, negative nine. If we have two matrices of the different size, once again, if I have a three by three and add that to a three by two, I cannot do that. I have another dimension mismatch. MATLAB will give you an error, I believe. <laughs> this is one of those instances where MATLAB does some pretty funky things and we'll see an example of that uh, later. For subtraction, if I take a matrix and I subtract a scalar, or if they're the other way, so if this was switched, same thing. If I have a two by three minus a scalar, I'm gonna end up with a two by three, where I'm gonna take each number in my matrix and subtract my scalar. So three minus four, negative one, five minus four, one, two minus four, negative two, and then I keep going. Negative nine, zero, and one. Addition of subtraction. That's pretty straightforward. It matches more or less your intuition. Okay. Let's get on to multiplication. Multiplication is where we start to deviate. Multiplication in matrices is different than multiplication with scalars. First things first though, if I have a scalar times a matrix, then it, I just take that scalar and I multiply it by every single value in my matrix. This one makes sense. So if I have three times all of this, where I have a two by three, my answer is going to be a two by three, where it's gonna be three times three, which is nine, three times two, which is six, three times four, which is 12, three times five, 15, three times negative five, negative 15, three times five, 15. That one does make sense. So if we have a scalar and a matrix, that one makes sense. Thank you, JR. So um, there are some caveats to that. Um, like if you, so MATLAB does this weird thing. Let me screen share. Okay, so I have this, oh, I forgot to change my font size because it's tiny for you guys. Fonts, bump that up to 14. Okay, much better. better. So, okay, so we have A, B, C. Um, so yes, so I can do all of that addition, subtraction, multiplication. So here we can see for um, one of them. 
Let me try this again. <laughs> uh, editor, run, there we go. So here is A plus B transpose, A plus C here, we can see we have our matrix dimensions must agree. That's the error you are going to see. And you'll probably see that a lot as we go through. So JR mentioned you can't add matrices of different dimensions uh, like A plus C. However, I'm pretty sure MATLAB will allow you to do something like this. Oops, I wanted to do A plus two, three. So here's one of those instances where MATLAB does something weird. So A is a, looks like this, and then two colon three or semicolon three looks like this. So note what MATLAB did in this instance is it just took two, three and added it to every column. So here's the first column of A plus two, three. Here's the first, or the second column of A plus two, three, the third column of A plus two, three. So it's one of those things where like MATLAB, it does something different behind the scenes. So this is where you guys can get even more trouble where you need to be careful what you're trying to do. Um, so if we have A plus C, we have our dimension mismatch because A is a two by three and C is a three by three. However, if you have like a two by three plus a two by one, clearly that one, clearly we don't have an error that I did the operation. So sometimes you guys really need to be really careful about what you're trying to do. Um, and like I said, debugging strategy, like highlight, click, evaluate selection, see what is happening and try and make sense of what's happening behind the scenes. I'm hoping you don't run into issues like this. Um, but I discovered this actually like three weeks or three years ago and I was like, what? When did you do this, MATLAB? And why are you doing this to me? Why are you making it more confusing? Okay. Okay. Little random aside. Let's go back to our notes. So like I said, scalar multiplication, this also matches your intuition. You take the scalar and you just multiply it by every single number in your matrix. If we try to do A times B, or B times A, or C times A, any of these operations, note it's A asterisk B, so our, this is our standard multiplication operation. It's not going to just take the values in A and multiply them by the values in B. What it does is it does what's called matrix multiplication. So matrix multiplication, uh, there's only in certain instances where we can do it. And I mentioned this in the video, we can only do it if the inner dimensions match. So if A is a three by two and B is a two by three, we can only do matrix multiplication if these inner dimensions match. So two matches two, that's great. If I had a three by two and a four by seven, these don't match, so I cannot multiply two matrices of that size together. The result is going to be a matrix of the outer dimensions. So my result is going to be a three by three. So if I have A here, it's a three by two, and here is a two by three. My result here is going to be a three by three. If I have a three by two with a two by three, my result is going to be a three by three. Nope. Hold on. I did that wrong. There we go. A two by three, a three by two. My result's gonna be two by two. There we go. If a three by two times a two by three, I get a three by three. There we go. That one's correct. Okay, and the way we fill this matrix here is through using what's called the dot product. So if I have a two by two, then I have four locations I need to fill. I need to fill this one, this one, this one, and this one. This first location is in row one, column one. This one is in row one, column two. This is in row two, column one. And this is in row two, column two. That is important. Okay, I'm writing that down on purpose. <laughs> because the way we fill these locations is by doing the dot product between the row, the same row in matrix A, and the same column in matrix B. So I'm gonna take the row in A, so row one, and the column in B, so column one, and I'm gonna do the dot product between those two. So the dot product is, here's some examples. The dot product essentially is between two vectors. So the dot product is between vectors of the same length, where all you're gonna do 
is take the numbers in your first vector, multiply them by the numbers in your second vector and add together. So it's gonna be three times two plus two times three plus four times two. Add that all together. Um, six plus six plus eight, 20. Same thing here, so if we had to do it again, so if I had the dot product between these two, same thing, negative one times three, plus three times negative one, plus negative one times negative four. So this dot product between these two vectors would be negative three, plus negative three, plus four, or negative, nope, yeah, negative two. So matrix multiplication is just a bunch of dot products. Okay, so like I said, we have these four locations to fill. This first one is row one, column one. So I'm gonna take row one of A, column one of B, and do the dot product between those two, which was 20. That's what we did above. Okay, so that's my first number. This second number here is between row one, column two. I'm gonna take row one, column two, and I'm gonna do the dot product between those. So three times three is nine. So let me do it over here. So three times three plus two times negative one plus four times negative four equals nine minus two minus 16, which gives me negative nine, I think. I'll double check my answers later. Okay, so now I found, I don't know why I deleted that. So now I found that one. Then this one here, it's row two, column one. So I'm gonna take row two, column one. So if the row of the first matrix and the column of the second matrix don't match, that's when it's compatible. So it's the, no, the columns of the first matrix and the rows of the second matrix. Because you need these to have the same number of elements. So this row, whoa. Undo. So the number of columns in A needs to match the number of rows in B. So here we go, we've got five times two minus five times three plus five times two or 20 minus 15, five. And then for my last one, same thing. Here I have row two, column two. Row two, column two. So, JR, that's a really good question. Uh, it doesn't matter what whether or not your vectors are rows or columns. It, the only thing that matters is, is if they are the same number of elements. So in this instance, they just happen to be rows and columns because we're doing matrix multiplication. Um, but uh, you can have two row vectors that you do the dot product between two column vectors. The only thing that's important is that they have the same number of elements. So for this one, we have five times three minus five times negative one plus five times negative four. And I encourage you guys to write out your work like this. Um, it really helps identify where the numbers are coming from. You will see the patterns as you go along, especially if um, I'll show you guys here um, what this looks like to, to show all the patterns. Um, but this answer is 15 plus five minus 20 or zero. This one appears to be zero. So I'm gonna move that over there. And let me show you what this pattern looks like for this bigger um, three by three. So if I have B times A, notice it's a three by two times a two by three. These inner dimensions match, that's good. My result is gonna be my outer dimension. So it's gonna be a big three by three, big being relative. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna draw all of the, um, the work here. So for my one, one location, I have the first row, first column. So it's going to be two times three plus three times five. Okay, now I have the second one, second row, second column. 
or second row, first column. So second row, first column. So it's going to be three times three plus negative one times five. And then keep going, uh, third row, first column. So it's going to be two times three plus negative four times five. If I did that for the second column, so now I'm doing this one, first row, second column. It's going to be two times two plus three times negative five. Second row, second column, three times two plus negative one times negative five. Third row, second column, two times two plus four, negative four times negative five. And so you can start to see the pattern here where this number and this number come from the row. So here's, or my first matrix. So two, three, two, that's my first row. Three, negative one, negative four, that's my second uh, column, my first column, second column. The three and the five, it's the same, going down. It's from my first column here. So as you write it out, you'll start to see the patterns that play out. Same thing here, two, three, two, two, three, two. Three, negative one, negative four, three, negative one, negative four. Two, negative five, two, negative five. If I wanted to do my last column, it would be two, three, two. Four, 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 plus, 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 uh, three, negative one, negative four, five, five, five. So I didn't even need to do my circling because I could detect that pattern where I know these numbers come from my first column in A or my first matrix. These numbers, these numbers here come from my second column. This number comes from here. This number comes from here. And so the more you write it out, show all of your work like this, the better you'll be able to detect those patterns that appear. That's how you do matrix multiplication. So in MATLAB, that's what it's doing when we type, when we type A times B. So here, A times B. So A, B, that's what they look like. A times B, it's doing matrix multiplication. Hey, look at that, my math is right. 20, negative nine, five, zero. That's different than what you might think. Because so you need to be careful. Note, if I do B times A, here's the result if I did all of those dot products that I just wrote out. Note, B times A is a three by three. So one important thing to note is A times B is not the same as B times A. So matrix multiplication is different from what you're used to. Some of you guys may have seen this maybe in high school. Most of you guys have not. So it's very counterintuitive. So you can only do multiplication between two matrices if the number of columns in your first matrix matches the number of rows in your second matrix. Your result is going to be the same as the number of rows in your first matrix and the same number of columns in your second matrix. And you do the dot product between the rows in their first matrix and the columns in your second matrix. So just practice that. Okay, let's go back and do another one. Maybe a little more space. So if I have C times A, so this one here. So C is a three by three, and then A is a three by two. So note my inner, my inner dimensions are called inner dimensions, just they're inside, they're close to each other, matched, so that's great. I can do this multiplication. Three, two is my uh, result, so I have a three by two. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So that means I need to do six dot products. So here is going to be the dot product between row one. Whoa, never mind. Fail. Fail. Three by three. Two by three. Never mind. 
Yes, thank you, JR. <laughs> the delay. There's a slight delay. Okay, uh, so here the inner dimensions do not match, so I cannot do this, uh, this multiplication. In MATLAB, you will get another dimension mismatch. It will say uh, incorrect dimensions. Here, let me show you guys this major, this error. So here, incorrect uh, error using multiplication. Incorrect dimensions for matrix multiplication. And then it tells you check the number, your dimensions, essentially. Sorry about that. Okay, so that is matrix multiplication. Does anybody want any more examples? Um, can we move on? Does that make sense? It's just practice. You just you just have to practice. And you'll get some practice in your homework. Um, but remember, it's just the dot product over and over again. Grab the rows, grab the columns. Okay, so Joey, let me do one more. Um, so let's say I have, I'll do a small one. I'll do a two by two with a two by two. Three, one, negative one. So make a smaller number. <laughs> two, and then four, uh, zero, um, negative one again, and three. Okay, so here I have a two by two with a two by two. So my inner dimensions clearly match, that's great. My result is also going to be a two by two. So I have four dot products to do. So this first one is going to be with the first row, first column, because it's in the first row, first column. So it's going to be 3 times 4 plus 1 times negative 1, or 12 minus 1, which is 11. And then I can pick any other one I want. I can do this one next. So here it's in the 2, 2, so that means I'm going to take the second row second column. So negative 1 times 0 plus 2 times 3, or 0 plus 6. So I'm going to 6 there. I'll go up to this one here. So this is in the 1, 2 location, the first row, second column. So that means I'm going to take, whoops, the first row, second column. So it's going to be 3 times 0 plus 1 times 3 or zero plus three, which is three. And then this last one. This last one is in the uh, two, one location. It's the second row, first column. So that means I'm going to take the second row, first column. So negative one times four plus two times negative one, or negative four minus two, negative six. There we go. So you should be able to fill in any location. So if I had a matrix multiplication and my result was gonna be like a four by seven, or a four by four, because of, you know, drawing limitations. If I wanted to fill this location, if I wanted to figure out what this one was gonna be, it's in row three, column three. So that means I'm going to take row three for my first matrix, column three for my second, and do the dot product. Same thing here. It's in row four, column one. So that means my row first, the fourth row for my first matrix, and then my first column for my second matrix. Do the dot product. Like I said, it just takes practice. Just over and over and over again. Okay, so now let's get into some of the more nuances of um, MATLAB. Let me just not delete that, but just shift it over. <laughs> okay. So we have another notation that MATLAB gives us, and it's called the dot notation. So if I do C times, so if it's just C asterisk A, that's doing matrix multiplication. However, if I have C dot times A, this is something different. So this is our dot notation. Different than the dot product. Okay, what this does is this is going to force MATLAB to do element by element operations. So if I did C plus A, that's element by element by default. It's gonna take the numbers in C and add them to the corresponding numbers in A, obviously only if they're the same size. 
This dot notation forces MATLAB to do the same thing, but now with my multiplication. Okay, so if we see C dot B, my matrices, it's gonna take the first number in C and multiply it by the first number in B. Note, this only works if they are the same size. So if C is a three by three and B is a three by two, it will give you an error. Error. Sometimes words sound funny when you say them slowly. So this will not happen, even though if I took away the dot, it would do matrix multiplication. But if I have the dot, it's forcing it to do element by element operations. And so it will not do this. So if we go back to MATLAB and I see C times B. So C times B is completely relevant. C is a three by three, B is a three by two. The result is a three by two. However, if I do C dot times B, it gives me this matrix dimensions must agree because here, if I put the dot there, I am forcing it to do element by element operations, which sometimes you really wanna do. And we'll see an example of that. So we have these two types of multiplications that MATLAB allows us to do. Here is ma matrix multiplication doing a bunch of dot products. Here is where we can force it to do element by element operations. So if we see this notation where we see A transpose dot B, a transpose is a three by two, a B is a three by two. My result is gonna be a three by two of just three times two, which is six, five times three, 15, two times three, which is six, negative five times negative one, which is five, four times two, which is eight, and then five times negative four, which is negative 20. So the dot operator matches your intuition. <laughs> so keep in mind, Regular asterisk is the linear algebra, the matrix multiplication. Where you do all the dot products. The dot asterisk is element by element. Okay. Let's keep going. So lots of operations. We're, al we're almost done for today. We're almost done for today, which is good because we've got 10 minutes. Okay. Same thing with the exponentiation. So technically I could say C squared. However, note C squared is the equivalent of saying C times C. There's no dot there which means that C squared is the equivalent of saying this matrix times this matrix. Which is matrix multiplication. So if you square a matrix, if you just do a matrix carrot something, it's going to do matrix multiplication. This is only uh, allowed with square matrices. Because they're the ones that have the right dimensions in order to do this. So if you do a matrix squared, keep in mind, that it's literally doing the C times C. So if it's matrix cubed, it's C times C times C. So what would we get a question like this on the test where we cannot use MATLAB but have to understand what's happening behind the scenes? Um, if you were given a written exam, yes. Um, but this year you will have access to MATLAB. But it's important that you know what's happening behind the scenes because you will run into these issues when it comes to um, when it comes to your homework. So here, if I try to do, so A is not squared. If I try to do A squared, it would give me an error. So it says check that the matrix is square and the power is a scalar. However, I can do C squared because C is square. 
But keep in mind, it's not every element in c squared. It's not negative 5 squared or negative 1 squared. It's the dot product of this with this for this first number, and this with this for the second number, etc. It's matrix multiplication. It's c, uh, c times c. Joey, that's your question. You're one step ahead of me. So if we wanted to do each element in c squared, we can use our dot notation to indicate that I don't want to do matrix multiplication. I don't want to multiply this matrix by itself x number of times. I want to take each element and square it. So if I do c dot caret 2, it's going to take negative 5 and square it, 25. Negative 1 and square it, 1. Negative 1 and square it, 1. And then 9, 9, negative, positive 9. <laughs> and then 0, 1, and 4. So this, once again, forces us to do element by element. I could also do element by element um, between two matrices of the same size. So if I did dot caret with two, one, zero, five, I could also do this. This is also valid, where it's going to be three dot caret two gives me a nine, three raised to the one, which is a three, one raised to the zero, which is one, and then two raised to the five, which uh, is 32. That's right. I know my powers are two, mostly. Kind of. <laughs> and so once again, this dot, when it comes to the caret, forces it to do element by element uh, operations, just like it does with the dot uh, asterisk. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about these element by element operations. They're really useful when we have like a whole bunch of Um, when we have a whole bunch of row vectors and we're trying to do a whole bunch of the same calculation with uh, a vector. So Zanzib, so matrix is dot product while element by element is multiplication or square. I don't quite know what you're asking. Matrix multiplication. So the single asterisk is your matrix multiplication, where you do the dot product over and over and over and over and over again. Element by element operations, uh, you can do with the dot asterisk, you can do with the dot caret, and with the dot divide. All of these force element by element. And we're, we're getting to the dot divide as well. We will get to matrix division uh, on Wednesday. So let's say we had something like this, and you'll probably run into this a lot. So this syntax, a uh, colon, it just places everything in a column, so just ignore that. I just pretend that we have a whole column of elements. If I do a, or this one squared, divided by this times this. Okay, good. Uh, it looks like it should work, right? You did this before. You did a squared divided by b times c. As long as a, b, and c are variables, right? You've done this for three weeks now. You're like, hey, that makes sense. Um, but this only works if a, b, and c are, are scalars. If a, b, and c are matrices, then we need to be a little more careful about these operations, about caret, about divide, about multiplication. We looked at um, caret, we looked at caret and multiplication uh, without the dot today. This is just matrix multiplication, as I mentioned. So if a, b, and c, if we want to do matrix multiplication, then this notation is fine. We don't need to change anything. We can just say a squared divided by b type c. Like I said, we will get to division um, on Wednesday, what it means when we have a matrix divided by another matrix. However, a lot of times we don't want to do something like this with matrices. A lot of times uh, we want to do element by element notation. So let's say we have something like this. 
So instead I say a dot caret squared dot divide b and then dot multiply c. So here I've changed all of my operations so that now they're forced to be element by element. But note, I have this written out like this on purpose, where here's a row vector or a column. Here's a column. And here is a row. If we want to do element by element operations, in theory, we should get the same size as our operations. So if I have a column with a column with a column, like I'd here, I should end up with a column. So JC cubes, you're on track. Um, so you would assume that this might result in a error. So let's go to MATLAB. So I have this typed in here. Here we go. It turns out that this type of operation is one of those weird instances where MATLAB like does something weird. It does A, which is my column. It does B, which is my column. But remember, this C ends up with a row vector. So I think what it's doing is it's taking this five and doing everything. I don't, I don't, I know what's happening behind the scenes. I can't quite articulate it. Um, but this is one of those instances where MATLAB doesn't necessarily appear, behave the way we expect it to behave. So you need to be careful about what you expect. So in your brain, you need to make sure you understand what you are trying to do. Because if you accidentally had a row here and you meant for it to be a column, clear, we just saw MATLAB will not give us an error. MATLAB will not give us an error. It will give us just something completely different. So that's why I have this transpose here. So make sure when you're doing element by element operations, you're working with all vectors of the same size. They're all columns or all rows. So now here, what this is gonna do is it's gonna give me my result where it's gonna be three squared divided by two times five. And then five squared divided by three times negative one. And then two squared divided by two times negative one, and then keep going. So it's important that you guys are careful about what you're typing into your command window or into your uh, script files, um, understanding what's happening. If you run into an error in MATLAB, it says dimension mismatch, it will tell you the line. If you run your script file, it will tell you the line and just start picking pieces. Okay. And so like, if I add this matrix, what is the size of my matrix? What does it look like? Highlight it, right click, run selection. Uh, see what that gives you. If you're doing element by element operations like this, make sure it's all the same dimensions where you have a row or a column the entire way across. Because if you have it mixed matched, it will give you something that you don't expect. Okay, one, uh, in our last minute, I want to go over an application of why we might or how we can approach these element by element operations. So let's say I have something that looks like this, where X is a vector, Y is a vector. Note, they are both rows. They are both rows, very important. And I want to calculate this nice long expression. If you have to do this, and you will have to do this in your homework, here's what I suggest you do. What I suggest is you write this out as if it was all scalars. So X times Y times EXP to the Y divided by X minus and root of X raised to the fourth times Y cubed plus 8.5 comma 3. And that's what it looks like if it was all scalars. So write that out and then go through your equation and add a dot in front of all of your asterisks 
in front of all of your division signs, and in front of all of your carrots. You don't always need the dot, especially if it's a scalar. Like if you have three times A, you don't need the dot, but you're not going to be penalized for it. Okay, so just to, as beginners, go away. Uh, as beginners, just go through your expression and just add a dot in front of all of those three. So I would add a dot here. I would add a dot here. I would add a dot here. I would add a dot here and here and here. And that's it. So if you are asked to do element by element operations, write it out as if it was a scalar and then add your dots in front of all of your asterisks, your division signs, and your carrots. That's my tip. Okay, we are out of time, uh, and I have to run the office hours. So that is what we are going over today. So we went over a lot. We did addition, subtraction, multiplication, element by element operations. So all of that, um, you can do a lot with that. Um, so keep in mind, the regular asterisk without a dot, this follows that's a terrible asterisk. This follows the linear algebra rules of matrix multiplication, where you do the dot product between rows and columns and all that fun stuff. This is element by element. Okay. Uh, on uh, Wednesday, we are going to go through matrix division, which involves calculating the inverse of a matrix, and we are going to get into solving systems of equations, which is what we are going to do for like five weeks uh, in linear algebra. Okay. Any final questions before we head out? Um, so for the matrix multiplication version of that equation with the columns, would that, yes. So if I go back to that, um, so if you did not have this asterisk here, or this dot here, it would be trying to do matrix multiplication between a five, nope, wrong one, a one by five and a one by five. These inner dimensions do not match. It will give you a dimension mismatch. Tidy, it's not quite five weeks. We're going to learn lots of different methods for solving systems um, algorithmically, uh, lots of different linear algebra methods. Um, <laughs> it's not necessarily it's 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 how to solve them using matrices and we'll see a glimpse of it there's just gonna a lot of techniques we'll go over gauss elimination gauss jordan elimination uh kramer's rule um shoot what are the other ones uh lu decomposition um there's just there's just a lot of different ways to solve a system of equations um yeah you'll you'll just You'll get used to it. Okay. MATLAB is short for matrix laboratory. Yes, it is. Uh, which is why its inherent language is linear algebra. Its inherent language uh, with the asterisk is matrix multiplication. Um, very good observation. Any final comments? As always, it is wonderful to chat with you guys. I will see you guys on Wednesday. Keep chugging forward. You guys can do this. Week four. Woohoo. One week at a time. <laughs>